I'm inside the plant that makes the world's most powerful jet engine. One day I may be on a plane and, and, and this engine may be on it. It's powerful enough to lift 383 tons, 43,000 feet in the air for 10,000 miles. It's tough enough to run at negative 60 degrees at the front end, while it's a blistering 2,000 degrees in the back. It's been tested against the toughest elements Mother Nature can dish. It's simply the baddest, most powerful jet engine in the world. Every year, GE Aviation, located in Durham, North Carolina, builds over 1,500 of the world's most advanced jet engines, including the world record-setting GE90. In order to churn out those top-of-the-line engines, they need an equally state-of-the-art plant. Today, test technician Patrick Bender is getting me inside access to see the ultimate precision and ingenious engineering it takes to put these amazing machines together. So that's the GE90. That is the GE90, yes, sir. That's why this place exists, right? Yeah, first thing that was developed here was actually the GE90. So what was the initial need for this engine? Boeing was making an aircraft called the 777, and they needed an engine that was going to be powerful enough, which is going to be a twin-engine airplane, be powerful enough to actually go overseas, and, and Boeing wanted the big engine. That's what they got. The Boeing 777 is the world's largest twin-jet airline, sporting a range of over 10,000 miles. To power it with only two engines, General Electric Aviation began developing and testing the GE90. In 2002, the 90 shattered a world record, outputting nearly 128,000 pounds of thrust. Today, this plant in Durham churns out nearly 200 of them every year. So I can see four engines being produced right here in front of me. Yep, that is correct. Jeez, this thing is huge. They are huge. I mean, this was a giant leap forward in aviation technology, oh, right? It was huge when it first came out. And the very yeah. building we're standing in exists to build this to build this particular line. Yes, okay. Sir. Covering half a million square feet of floor space, the plant is tricked out with 300 hoists, which can lift anywhere from 1,000 pounds to 20 tons. Parts are shipped from around the world, where they're scanned and tracked before they're assembled, ground down, balanced to perfection, and mated to other parts. But when you understand how these things work, you understand why they're built to last. This is all about moving air through this enormous machine, compressing it down, making that air really thick, okay? And then it gets mixed with fuel, ignited, and that thick, hot mixture of air and fuel creates this huge amounts of thrust, which in turn pushes the turbines in this section. And all that energy is actually running the engine back here at the same time. So it's a big circle. In all, there are nearly 12,500 parts that need to be assembled perfectly before the engine is shipped. I can take you back to the back of the building and actually have some sub-assemblies going back there. The engine is divided into several sub-assemblies, including the fan, compressor, and turbines. Each assembly is ground down to microscopic perfection. This is the shroud grind, and this is the part where after the part gets assembled, it has to go through a grind process. And actually, one of our experts on the grind is Chip. All right. Hey, Chip. How you doing? <laughs> Doug. Doug's going to meet you. But what I'm doing is I'm going to drop this down on this. This is called a tub. And then I'm going to center it within five ten thousandths of an inch because the surfaces I grind are very critical. Very five small. Five ten thousandths of five, an inch. Five ten thousandths of an inch. Wow. After he centers the shroud precisely, Chip begins an automated grind process that shaves slices off this metal as thin as one thirtieth the thickness of copy paper. What Chip is doing in here is setting up for an eight-hour grind cycle. All of this grinding will occur down to incredibly small tolerances. That's why this engine all fits together and works. <laughs> After the parts are ground down, critical components are put into a harmonic balancer, working essentially like a tuning fork. The balancing instruments can detect the most minute imbalances in the turbine by listening to the vibrations it makes as it spins. Just to see one small part of a very large engine is amazing how much work goes into just that. After several tests, checks, and double checks, these smaller parts, some weighing as much as five tons, have to be put together. What's this station here? This is the GE90 vertical pit area. They're actually mating 
the turbine rotor assembly onto the compressor rotor. So there's a pit underneath of this? Yes, yeah, so they can actually raise the engine up and down in the ground versus going up and down steps. I can tell from the serious expressions on those men's faces that something important is going on here. The vertical pit sits 13 feet below ground and can raise and lower the 11-ton engine as each sub-assembly is mounted from a hydraulically controlled platform. Wow, this is where we start. I feel like I'm at NASA now. Whatever stage on that jet they're working on, they can lower or raise it. In just one week, this factory can crank out an engine capable of world record-breaking power, and more importantly, one designed to withstand anything Mother Nature can throw at it. What about the birds flying in? The birds. There's a lot of people ask us about the birds. Yeah. Um, those are like initial tests that they perform, and they actually see how the engine holds up to a bird strike. Large flocks of birds running into aircraft are a major problem, causing up to $1.2 billion in damage worldwide and hundreds of fatalities. There are two key lines of defense against bird strikes. The first is the spinner, which deflects foreign materials away from the engine core and into the bypass section. The second is the blade, composed of 1,700 layers of carbon fiber and capped with titanium. The blade can ingest a bird and continue to operate without missing a beat. And when the entire engine, including the blades, is assembled, it's tested against the birds, rain, even hail. It might seem like a harsh way to treat an engine that's been put together so carefully, but when you're flying across the globe at 35,000 feet, you'll be glad they did it. 